This is your first tutorial on second order systems. Let's begin with a quick review of the impedances defined in the P operator domain. For a resistor, the impedance is just R, its resistance. For an inductor, the impedance is LP. For a capacitor, the impedance is 1 over CP, where P is the P operator introduced by physicist Oliver Heaviside. We know that KCL, KVL, and Ohm's law, they still apply in the P domain, so that means that we can combine impedances in series like so, or simplify impedances in parallel this way. We've done that in class and complicated examples more than this one. Let's work now on an exercise. The switch has been open for a long time. At t equals zero, the switch closes. Find, after zero, what is the differential equation whose solution gives the voltage in the capacitor? Wait a minute. What switch? What capacitor? This switch and this capacitor. I see. Good. This is the voltage here, Vc, that we need to find, or rather the differential equation whose solution gives us this voltage, the voltage in the capacitor, from here to there. Let's begin. For t greater than zero, of course, the switch is closed and the current source is shorted out of existence. Replace 2h by its impedance, 2p. Replace the capacitance, one third of a farad, by its impedance, 3 over p. Let's do that, 2p, 3 over p. Now, using m and a, choose a reference node. This node actually is not unknown. Its voltage is 15 volts with respect to the reference as given by this V source. But we still need to identify node 1 here on the top and node 2, we have chosen them, the branch currents as indicated, and we are ready to start writing M and A equations. We begin with the usual question. Is there any controlling variable? Sure there is. Ix. Write Ix. This Ix as a function of total voltages. This current is V1 minus V reference divided by this impedance. That is the control equation O1. And now two KCL equations. One for node two. Currents going in node two. This one at the bottom. 15 minus V2 divided by 6 plus 5. Currents going into the node. And three currents going out of the node. Seven, this current, and this current. Seven amps going out. And this current, which is a current in the middle branch. V2 minus V1 plus this source 2Ix divided by 3 ohms. That current is leaving. And last, the current in the 3 ohm resistor on the right, V2 minus V1 over 3, like so. And now KCL for node 1 in here. Currents going in, this one, 15 minus V1 plus 10 volts divided by the impedance 2 plus 2P plus the current entering the same node from the right, V2 minus V1 over 3, plus this current, which we already have seen, equals to the current Ix that we've seen before. We have three equations and three unknowns, V1, V2, and Ix. Now we solve them. These are the three equations that we need to solve for V1, V2 and Ix. But before doing that, make sure that your calculator is not in approximated mode. How do you do that? You press mode, then you go to the CIS, and in there you make sure that this flag, approx, is unchecked. Once you've done that, then you're ready to solve that. You make that into an array, like so, three equations, and then you specify which are the unknowns you want to solve for, like so. And then you go to the symbolic solver and ask for a linear 
solution. Those are the solutions which come in a vector v1 on the top, almost invisible, v2 and ix. But you say, well, you know what? I cannot see v1. Variables break that object into pieces, delete the number at the bottom, and then we can try and roll up with the up arrow. We move up to the third position where we know v1 is going to be, and then we ask for a roll up, like so. And then we press enter, and voila, v1 is now on the bottom, and we can read what it is. This is a differential equation, mind you, a second order differential equation whose solution is v1. And the solution that we have seen, we take from the calculator is this one. That is a differential equation, a second order differential equation whose solution is v1, the voltage of this node with respect to the reference. However, how do we find vc? How do we find this voltage? Because after all, we were not asked for a differential equation whose solution is v1. We were asked for a differential equation whose solution is the voltage in the capacitor vc. Well, easy. If we know v1, we can use a voltage divider of v1 across this 4 ohms and 3 over p impedances, like so. You see, Vc is V1 times this impedance divided by the total impedance of the branch. We can do that either by hand or on your calculator. Let me do this on the calculator. First, I press Enter to have two copies of V1. Then I use clear equality to eliminate that first term, and I have V1. Now we enter the a voltage in divider. This is the voltage divider. Let's multiply them like so. That has to be Vc. But to simplify that, I press evaluate and I get Vc. This is the voltage in the capacitor. Or rather, this is the differential equation whose solution is the voltage in the capacitor. This we copy directly from the calculator. We can write that knowing that this term is zero, as we saw in class, the differential equation whose solution is the voltage in the capacitor with the coefficient 62, 174, and 87. Negative, negative, it's a positive 3 times 377. And that is the solution to the problem, at least to this part, of course. There remains to find K1, K2, and K3, that is a different problem. Thank you very much.